Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Emily and I post a lot of bookish content. And for today's video, we're just going to be doing classic November wrap up and December TBR. So I am well aware that it is December 10th when this is going up, but I have already finished one book and plan on reading more in December. We're just going to start with the November wrap up and then we'll get to December. But thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to stick around and see more videos from me. Do not forget to like if you enjoy this video. And without further ado, let's get into November wrap up. So I'm going to be doing this in order and the very first book that I finished in November was Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Love this book so, so much. I rated it a five out of five. I read Stephen King's memoir on writing right before I read this just because I wanted to understand a little bit better like how he writes, why he writes the way he does, and I think that it really helped me understand this book so much more, understand like all the hard work that he put into the detail of this book. The story is just like so complex and out of this world that I'm definitely going to be picking up more Stephen King. If you are not aware of what this book is about, it is about a man, I forget his name right now, and his wife and his two kids who move to Maine and he gets a job as a doctor at the university there and their house is beautiful and they have a neighbor who shows them up this hill to a pet cemetery. The book is basically revolved around learning about death, not being afraid of dying, all of that stuff, but at the back of this book it does say sometimes dead is better. So I'm not going to spoil too much about this, but it does have a lot to do with the main character who is the husband, the neighbor who is his best friend, this older gentleman, and their younger daughter. So definitely go pick this up if you are interested in a scary book that has to do with death and animals and family dynamic because this has all of it and the writing was so so good. The next book I read was definitely a switch and that was November 9 by Colleen Hoover. So if you hadn't guessed, I did pick this book up on November 9 to read it and I was really hoping I could have read it in one sitting but obviously life gets in the way sometimes. So I read this over two days and oh my god, it is such a good book, okay? This is about Fallon and Ben. Fallon is this Hmm, how do I explain her? Just a young woman who definitely has a few issues with her family, specifically her dad, and a few years prior she gets caught in this fire at his house and she blames him for the whole thing. But she gets caught in this fire and has basically half of her body completely burned and she is so self-conscious, doesn't think anyone could ever love her, and she wants to be an actor and just doesn't think it's going to happen for her now. She's having all these issues with her dad at a diner, they're talking, they're arguing, and this random guy named Ben just shows up and sits by her and says that he's her boyfriend. Ben is just everything. So this is an insta-love book in my opinion, and if you're not a fan of that, totally fine, but it does span over I think five years because they decide that every November 9 they are going to meet up and they have no contact otherwise. They don't text, they don't follow each other on anything, they don't call each other, they just know where to meet at that day every single year, and they have a great time together. There is obviously confusion in the relationship, and they want each other to live freely in the meantime, but on that one day, they're dating every single year. There is a lot of twists and turns in this book, there is definitely some, there are definitely some relationship issues between Fallon and Ben as they grow up. They want different things, they want the same things, all these things. I don't want to spoil it for you. But basically, Fallon is, is a very relatable character if you are a young woman who is insecure and needs to gain more confidence with, you know, the way she looks and the way she acts. And then Ben is just such an honest, truthful guy. He really cares about his family. A lot of sad shit happens in this book. And the ending just, just gets me. So, not going to say if it's a happy ending or not because I don't want to spoil a single thing, but definitely, definitely read this book, whether it's tomorrow or next year on November 9, whatever you want to do. But Colleen Hoover is just, she never disappoints. So definitely go pick this up. It is by far my favorite Colleen Hoover book right now. The next book I read was once again, another thriller. I would consider this more like a dramatic thriller, but it is The Girls Are All So Nice Here by Laurie Elizabeth Flynn. And I have mixed 
feelings on this book. It's basically about this girl named Ambrosia and she has a lifelong universe, not lifelong, but like a university friend named Sully or Sullivan and they are, they're bullies. They're mean, okay? They do things that no nice human would ever do to other people. So Ambrosia in university has a roommate named Flora and to me it just seems like her and Sully are very jealous of Laura's life and how nice she's to other people but they do kind of give it off as if she's just a fake person because she's so nice. It is 10 years later and Ambrosia gets an email saying that they're having a 10 year reunion at the university so obviously her and her now husband go to this event. It's over the weekend and she is dreading it because there is a secret that her and Sully are the only ones who know? Yeah, there's a lot of drama with people ste stealing each other's boyfriends. I don't know. I feel like these girls just were so unrealistic, so mean that I couldn't really relate to them. And I know that Laurie Elizabeth Flynn is the type of writer who wants you to dislike the girls. And I just don't think I enjoy that very much. Like there was no morals. These girls weren't thinking. It's not like they were like 15, you know, they were 19. They kind of knew what they were doing, but overall, I think this book is just about the intensity of wanting to fit in with certain people at such a young age and the lengths you can go to to fit in, and it's not worth it in the end. This, honestly, it was an okay book. I just, I gave it a three and a half out of five because the girls were just so frustrating and I literally wanted to slap them in the face the entire book. It's, it's okay. Would I recommend it? Maybe if you're like 16 to 20 female, I don't know. If you're a male, I don't think you're gonna like this book. I'm 24, almost 25, and I thought it was a little bit juvenile, but the writing was good. The story was definitely interesting. The girls were just very frustrating. The next book I read, I do not have a physical copy of, but it is Flock by Kate Stewart, and this is a part of her Ravenhood series. It is a trilogy. There's Flock, Exodus, and The Finish Line. It's gonna be very difficult for me to try and explain this book, but I will do my best. Our main character's name is Cecilia, and she originally lives with her mom, but her mom is going through a really hard time right now, and I believe she needs money, so she goes, Cecilia, goes to live with her dad, who is willing to allow her to inherit some of his company slash money if she works there over the summer. So that's what she does, and when she goes to work there, she meets Sean. Good old Sean. So Sean has this group of friends, I believe their names are Russell, Tyler, and Dominic. And all of them live together in this house, they all work at this mechanic shop, and I think she just can't believe how interested they are in her because they're a little bit older than she is. I think she's around 19 and they're like 24 or 5, and they're all insanely attractive, according to the writing of this book. <laughs> so they all take an interest in her in different ways, especially Sean, and there's a lot of smut in this book. It's spicy, I was not expecting that, but it's good. And there are also a few, you know, love triangle situations, I'll just say that. But I have heard reviews that this book doesn't really go anywhere, and I think that's true. Like, it's just honestly a book full of learning about the characters' personalities and sex, but I know that the next book is definitely gonna lead somewhere. I've been told that this book is just confusing, the next book is gonna like break your heart, and then the last book, it all comes together and you're like, wow, this was an amazing series. I think Kate Stewart's writing is so good. It's literally like the simplest writing I've ever read, if that makes sense. Like I was able to follow it so clearly, I did not wanna put this book down, and I think that it is super easy to relate to Cecilia as a young woman as well because she just is insecure, she doesn't really know what she wants, she is definitely a little bit more uptight and these guys that she ends up kind of falling for or being with open her eyes to the idea of free will and being a free spirit and kind of just like not caring about what other people think and living your life for you in the now. I really do like the story in this book and it does introduce us to the Raven Hood just a little bit. There is like a bunch of secrets that these guys have and she's still learning it by the end of this book. So I'm really excited to read the next one in December, which we're gonna get to in a minute. And the last book that I read in November is Daydreamer by Ian McEwan. Can you see that? I don't know. Um, this is a novella. It's very short. I believe it's like 130 pages and it was so cute. It is about this 10 year old boy named Peter and he has just 
such an imagination like it's almost too intense for a 10 year old but I think that that's the point of this book because it's supposed to intrigue young people as well as adults and a lot of the things that he imagines in his head and brings to life on these pages is really intense and stuff that I think an adult would be like wow that's amusing I don't know but also kids can be like oh my god that's so cool so I think Ian McEwan did a really good job writing this there are different short stories for every chapter and it's all in Peter's point of view I can give you guys a little example. Chapter one is called The Dolls. He basically shares a room with his sister and then they end up splitting up and he has his own room, but he goes into his sister's room and he imagines that all of her dolls come to life and they're going to attack him because they're mad that he got the room instead of them. It's just, it's super random. Obviously his sister comes in and he's just playing with the dolls. Like there's nothing actually happening, but his imagination is so intense that he just comes up with these things and it was just really fun and a super quick read. I think I read this in like two days. Pick this up if you want. Ian McEwan has amazing writing. My favorite movie is The Atonement, which he in fact wrote. And now we're gonna finally get into December TBR. Okay, I only have three books for this month that I planned on reading. So we'll see if I get to more, but if not, I'm happy with these that I chose. I have already finished In Five Years by Rebecca Surly. This book, it was really good, honestly. I rated it a four out of five. In this book, we follow Danny or Danielle, and she is definitely a type A person. She's a lawyer, she is all about numbers and timing, and she plans out everything in her life down to the T. So she just gets engaged to her fiance, David, and she has this best friend named Bella who is just the opposite of her. Her best friend Bella is the complete opposite. She is a free spirit, she parties a lot, she dates, she falls in love, they break up, all that stuff. And so they're very, very different people, but somehow they fit. Obviously not to the same intensity, but I feel like their relationship reminds me of mine with my best friend. But I think that's one of the main reasons why I wasn't able to give this a five out of five star. There are a lot of sad moments in this book and because it reminds me of my relationship with my best friend, it just made me really, really sad, probably sadder than anyone else who would read this book unless they have the same situation as me which is probably possible i mean i'm sure it's very possible but yeah so she goes to bed on december 15th wakes up and she is in the future it's now 2025 five years in the future she's in a different apartment with a different guy with a different ring on her finger and she's freaking out she wakes up the next day and she's back in 2020 with her original fiance she has no idea what just happened and she doesn't really tell anyone. She goes to see a therapist, but other than that, she doesn't tell Bella. She doesn't tell anyone. And from there, she kind of just goes along with her life for the next five years. And at four and a half years in the future, she does end up running into the same guy. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Like I said, there are a lot of sad moments, but there are a lot of beautiful moments as well. And the writing was great. This is actually Lost in the Plots of Book Club pick for December, so I'm really excited to finally make some discussion questions for this and talk about it with the girls there. I would highly recommend picking this up, if if not for the story, for the cover. I mean, the cover is beautiful. So, first book that I read in December, and the next two I haven't read yet, but I'm about to start in the next few days. My battery's dying. Okay, my battery just died, so I had to get another one. But we are on the last stride the last two books of my December TBR. So again, I do not have this one physically, but I'm gonna be reading Exodus by Kate Stewart. <laughs> again, the second book of the Ravenhood series. So excited to keep following Cecilia, Sean, Dominic, Tyler, all of them, getting to know them, seeing what this Ravenhood is truly about, hearing about all their secrets, and hopefully seeing who Cecilia maybe falls in love with, or maybe she learns a lot, I don't really know, but that is the second last book I plan on reading in December. And the last book is definitely more of like a lighthearted holiday read and that is The Holiday X-Files. So I kind of just chose this one on a whim. It just looked cute, but basically it's about this girl who is in a relationship and her boyfriend gets caught cheating around the holidays. And from that point on, she's not a fan of the holidays at this point because Obviously, her boyfriend cheats on her and it just ruins the whole vibe for her. At this point, she is cutting all of his faces out of photos of them and I think she ends up making like a business out of it for people. I don't even know. But then this guy comes along. I think he's actually like a friend of her ex or something 
and he helps her realize the magic of Christmas. And then ultimately I'm sure they end up falling in love. I don't know, but I think so. Kind of funny, I think. It's just like very modern and basic at the same time, but it is revolving around the holidays. So I think it's gonna be a great read, but that is it for this video. Those are all the books I plan on reading in December and all the books that I read in November. I will also put all the books linked down below if you're interested in picking them up. I also have all my socials down there if you're interested in following, subscribing, joining the book club, all that jazz. Do you want to say hi, Felix? He's a good boy. Can you see his calm? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a great December so far. Hope you guys are getting all of your Christmas shopping in early because I know that I'm basically done and it feels so good. No stress around the holidays. Subscribe, like, and I'll see you guys in my next video.